science writing evolved in the United States, in the U.S., which is where I know it, to be kind of a tr job of translating science for the public. That's what science journalists do. And the idea is, in theory, that it's all so complicated and so complex, and you have to be so well trained in the nuances that the journalists can't be smart enough, really, to challenge them anyway. We're just not experts enough. So yeah. you could be a Middle East reporter. You can spend 20 years of your life in the Middle East and understand the politics and the sociology and the conflicts as well as any academic. And then you could you know, inform your reporting with all your interviews with the academic, so people will accept that you're better. But in science, the idea is it's just too complex, medicine and science. And so, and most researchers, well, I had, a, when I first wrote my first piece uh, on obesity for the New York Times Magazine, and I got attacked by the then nutrition reporter for the Washington Post, and she told me she believed her job was to faithfully translate what the people at the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the National Institutes of Health were saying for the public. Wow. It just wasn't up to us to challenge people. The problem is, I mean, some of these sciences, I, I grew up writing about physics and all sciences. I had a physics background. There was a field like quantum optics, where if I had to do a story on quantum optics, I literally got a headache trying to understand it enough so that I could dumb it down enough that I could write it for a science magazine speaking to scientists. Yeah. But obesity, there are all kinds of obvious anomalies out there, including the fact that I'm supposed to think that every person who walks by who's overweight just eats too much. Yeah, yeah. That that's somehow an explanation. So there are fields in which, you know, I wouldn't think to question the scientific interpretation, but there are other fields that verge so closely onto, you know, real life and, and, and the, the, a certain amount of common sense has been left behind. So um, and I just stumbled into that field. So I became one of the first and the sort of major players in journalism to question. You know, with COVID, there's probably a lot. But you're, if you question the quacks, the fringe elements, you're always safe because now you're working. Yeah. And my second book was called Bad Science. It was about this bogus discovery of cold fusion in 1989. And I was always critiquing the bad scientists. I was on the side of the establishment. So nobody, th that's not an issue. You're always you're fine. In good You agree with us, you're fine. Yeah, carry yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're smart, you're good. It's then I, when I stepped into nutrition and it seemed so clear that the nutritionists didn't know what good science was and the obesity researchers didn't know what, in part, cause they just too hard to do the experiments.